Okay, so now I'm gonna work on pressing on my carrier bearings. The way you're gonna identify these in the set is they're gonna be the two bearings that are identical. There are two other bearings that are not the same, and those are gonna go on your pinion. So what I've done here is I've stacked them, the two bearings, one on top of the other, making sure I center them, which they look a little bit off-center looking in that direction. So I'm gonna make sure I center everything up. And also make sure that these can spin freely because you don't want to mess up your bearing cages at all as you're pressing that on. So now I'm just gonna start pressing it down. And as you can see, it's not wanting to go on straight, so I must have my press on a little bit crooked. So I'm going to undo this and readjust where my press is hitting to make sure that this is going on straight. And actually, I think to start, I can probably just use this because again, that's not hitting my bearing race. So we're okay there. But I do need to make sure it's going on straight. So again, I'm just gonna move my carrier unit slightly. Sorry, you guys can't see what I'm doing. And of course I've reached the maximum throw of my press here. So I'm gonna have to stack a socket in there. Just gonna use this one here because it's a nice big socket. Okay, there we go. Again, I'm not pushing on my bearing race, so we're good. And we are fully seated. The bearing still spins freely. The only thing I'm gonna ensure is that we've got it pushed all the way down because, so when I was pressing the bearing a moment ago with the uh, black spacer there, it would have made these two surfaces flush, this one with this one. But you wanna make sure this is fully seated down onto the carrier unit. That's where I'm gonna take the other bearing. And again, just make sure that fully seats. Make sure this is centered. I'm going to go ahead and put that socket back in there too because I know that we're getting towards the end of the throw there. Okay. Just going to make sure that fully seats. See if it goes down any further. Yes, and it did go down just a hair, so that means it does have to go past that part of the, the spindle of the carrier unit ever so slightly. You'll see what I mean in just a second. So you can maybe see in the video that, that this is this race, outer race here, this, this race right here is pushed on just a little bit further than the carrier unit itself. So you do have to find something that will allow you to press that on just a hair further. And uh, our bearings still spin freely. They aren't deformed in any way, so we're good to go. We're gonna flip it over and do the other side. I'm not sure how I'm gonna achieve this on the other side yet. Um, maybe one of the pinion bearings is the same size inner diameter or similar enough to use. We'll find out. Okay, so after looking around, I actually do not have anything that will um, work <laughs> to push on this other bearing, except I do have another bearing kit that I'm going to return. I'm going to use one of those bearings to press this on with. So I'm not sure what you're going to have to do in your shop. You may have to improvise some sort of pipe of the right diameter would probably work. Um, otherwise, I'm not exactly sure how you would achieve that. But I'm going to go ahead and press on this other bearing. And again, you can see it's wanting to go on a little crooked. So I'm going to have to move my stuff around a little. Because we definitely don't want that. We want that to go on perfectly straight. So here we are with that other bearing. The obvious answer to this dilemma would be to use an old bearing. Unfortunately, I don't have any of those until you remove the other carrier. I'm trying to do this ahead of time. That way I can just swap my carriers and worry about adjusting my pinion depth and backlash and all that stuff and not have to worry about pressing on bearings and messing around with all that. That's fully seated. Everything spins fine. We're not having any issues. 
So at this point, this carrier unit is pretty much as ready as it's going to be. So with that, you've got yourself a carrier unit assembled and ready to install in your Jeep. I wanted to go ahead and get this far with it before working on it. That way I didn't have to do it the day of. Save myself a little bit of time. So this is ready to go in. And uh, next video will be when we're actually pulling this thing apart to slap it in there. Maybe next weekend. Everyone, if you enjoyed today's video, I would invite you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below right there on the right hand corner. And if you felt that the products in today's video is something you'd might like to own yourself, there's a product link right up there to the right, upper right hand corner, or down in the description will be a product link for you to purchase the product as well. Thank you very much for watching YouTube.